What is up, Watch Fam? Happy Friday, and welcome to this week's episode of Liquor Run. I am Christian from Theo and Harris, and this is my old man, Rolly. And today, we're going to be talking about two watches, a very controversial Bulova, and probably one of the biggest value props in modern Omega. Let's do it. All right, before we jump into the watches and the wine, wristwatch check. What are you wearing? The, my old, old faithful, GMT. GMT. This watch yes. has become so valuable. What did mom pay for this watch? Like four grand? Four thousand dollars back in it's 2005. Now the 1671, 16710, or something like that, or 167 something, whatever the reference is. These watches are like 10, 11, 12 thousand dollars now, boxing papers. Insanity. Insanity. And, and at the time, just like you know, now, you buy it kind of unassuming, you know? That's Rolex. Better than the stock market. <laughs> Uh, I'm wearing another Rolex, this one from 1977. Um, it's, uh, it's a Buckley dial. Yeah, I love this watch. I love this watch. The gold and this strap. Pretty cool, right? Looks beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I, yeah. love, I love Buckley dials. They're not only rare, um, but they're really pretty. They have a boldness to them, don't mm -hmm. they? Now, wait, now we have a special guest. Lola was begging to join Liquor Run, so she's joined. Uh, tell oh, me. By the way. Yes. Lola yeah. has got a new uh, competitive uh, website, Lola and Harris. <laughs> Vintage mechanical watches. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh, all right, what are we drinking for wine today, Daddy-O, before we talk about watches? Something we drink all the time around this house. Yeah. Uh, Ardèche Chardonnay by Louis Latour. Yep. Simple. It's from the south of France. Latour means quality. And uh, there's not much to say other than the fact that this wine is consistently a really nice wine. Uncomplicated. How much is it? Um, nine dollars. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. We've been nine drinking this wine for a couple of years now, right? Uh, many years. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, to me, it hits the spot. If you like Chardonnay, that's not doesn't have that oakiness or buttery. It's not with buttery. I was gonna say buttery. A lot of Chardonnay yeah. that you know we'll have sometimes. That's it's a, that very um very buttery. It's, it's it's kind of funny to describe a wine yeah. as buttery, but it's true. Uh, and this wine is very refreshing. Which, yeah, and it, or that vanilla, that oaky, like yeah. oaky, you know, new oak, American oak doesn't have that. Yep. So uh, we we've talked about this well, maybe about a year ago. But this is a go-to. Yep. I, I like this wine. Cool. So that's so. what we're that's what we're kicking back with uh, on this on this Friday afternoon. Exactly. So, watches. I, I brought I brought two watches to the table today, which is actually kind of a cool concept. Watches on the table. Um, I brought. Let's start off with the Omega. I brought a really really interesting Omega that I've never owned before. When you were buying your Wempy, yes. Um, I remember like you know, considering a bunch of watches. Mm -hmm. The Wempy Zeitmeister happened to be a wonderful choice. Yes. Um, but there were a couple of things we were considering. You know, we were going to go Speedmaster, but that wasn't really your thing. Right. Um, and then I looked at other like really really valuable uh, propositions. Now four years ago, I wasn't. Uh, I didn't have the knowledge I do now about the market. Uh, but yet. This was actually a watch. There's a chronograph version that I was looking at more specifically, but the Omega Dynamics were a watch I was considering, you know, showing you. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, you know, the, we never, I guess, fleshed out all the options, right. and you went with a wonderful watch. Right. But this is an interesting, interesting watch. In my opinion, extremely undervalued. And and it, you know, it kind of makes sense how we ended up with the Wempy. Look at the case, that brushed steel case. Um, it, uh, it's very it, reminiscent of, of highly the Wempy. Rem highly reminiscent of the, of the Vempy, right? Yeah. Vempy, a Wempy, yeah. however you want to say it. Uh, the sword hands. Yeah. Uh, it's got, it, it looks like it's got some the, killer loom. Yeah. Uh, and the matte dial. And the matte and dial. And the case. Yeah, so it, do, it does remind me a lot of that watch. And if you maybe show a picture of that, of that yeah. watch, uh, that would be great for reference. Yeah. Uh, but yes, the, that, uh, that, uh, the brush finish. The, the brush finish. Matt. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah. there, there's all, there are a lot of similarities here. But what's between, amazing to me is these watches are just so, I, I hate to say affordable or inexpensive because it's all relative, mm -hmm. but in the world of watches, these are stupid cheap. Yeah. Like, stupid cheap. And the fact is, you're owning an extremely well-balanced, designed, thought-out Omega. Right. I mean... That's like a big thing. Yeah. Try it on. Yeah. I, and, I, and I love the yellow. I mean, I know that some people uh, don't go for all those colors and stuff like that, but I think the yellow is extremely Now, handsome. you did say that this is a, all about like a summer kind of issue. I think so. Uh, or episode. Yeah. I, I agree. This is a great watch to wear with, you know, shorts and, and yeah. whatever, shirt like this. And yeah. You're on vacation and you don't have to uh, worry too much. Yeah. It looks like this is a pretty, uh, pretty... Uh, 
you know, robust watch in the sense that it can take a, it can take a little take bit a, of a beating, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah ultimately, yeah. I mean. It looks like a field watch to me. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Actually, good point. I yeah. didn't think about that. Yeah. Seriously. Uh, ultimately, you know, I just, uh, I, I think that the whole, the Theo and Harris is a company, you remember this, you know, was started um, with the idea of, of bringing really undervalued watches to the market. Yes. And then, you know, naturally the company evolved. I still do think that a lot of the watches we sell are very undervalued, but this watch really does embody that real affordability. You know, when we started, I wanted to stay under 500 bucks. I mean, that was, remember that? I mean, yes. that was really one of the missions of the company in the beginning right. was to say, okay, let's compete with Daniel Wellington. Let's compete with, you know, whomever, fossil, whatever, uh, and bring vintage, right? And ultimately it becomes impractical for a thousand reasons, one of them being sourcing and availability of things. But it, to me, it's still super compelling to drink a really tasty $9 bottle of wine. Yes. And wear a watch that should be worth probably at least double, if not a yeah. little bit more than that, you know? It gives a lot of pleasure, doesn't a, it? A lot. Yeah. A lot. And that brings us to our second watch here. Um, this is a very controversial watch. My opinion is favorable, but I am 100% open to the criticism. What does this look like to you? It looks like a uh, AP. AP Royal? <laughs> Royal yeah. It's kind of funny. It's yeah. AP. Um, everyone says that AP only makes one watch. You just... <laughs> yeah. You're right. Yeah. You know? <laughs> AP makes so many watches, yeah. but you're so right. Uh, AP makes one watch. It's the Royal Oak, uh, and this is base. You know, the word homage is a nice way of what it is. It's a ripoff. Yes. It's a rip. I mean, it's yeah. a ripoff yes. of the AP Royal Oak every step of the way. And yes, in my opinion, yes. and you have it in your hands. Yeah. Take a look at it. Yeah, it, pretty it, damn well it, executed. It's a really nice copy. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, look at that. Look at that. I mean, the bracelet is, is finely yeah. beveled, very well cut. Um, yeah. Again, controversial piece like the Gavril Tribeca. Yeah. I think that if you know me, if, if you follow Theo and Harris, if, if you yeah. know, agree or disagree, you know I don't, I don't take myself and, our, and, and watches all that seriously. It's a, it's a passion. We have fun with it. But this doesn't insult me. Some people are super bothered by it, and I respect their... I respect their opinions. Well, if you're a purist, you're going to be upset. You're by upset it. by it, you know. Yeah. Oh, it's a ripoff, and and that gets a zero for creativity. And you're right; it does get a zero for creativity. Yeah. You know. I, yeah. But yeah, the fact that it represents value <laughs> does not. It, it does. It, it does represent value. I mean, Boulevard is 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 a is a, is a good watch, right? It's a yeah. quartz, oh, quartz yeah. watch. It's a quartz watch. Yeah. Quartz watch. But they, they, they did a thin. nice job here. Even the finish, everything is. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's kind of uh, close. It's kind of close. It's, it yeah. really reminds me, sure. you know, of so many of so many APs. Uh, of course, there are so many I mean, different references of of the of the Royal Oak, uh, and it reminds me of some more than others, of course. Yeah. Um, but it's ultra slim. I yeah. mean, yeah. you know. So this kind of brings up the conversation of fake watches, yes. right? Th this, wa this watch really is the catalyst for a conversation about what's the difference between this and a fake watch? Wow. Right? Yeah. What's the, what's the difference? What's the difference between this and, you know, well, this with AP written on it? First of all, I, I think if, if Boulevard is going to put its stamp to it, there's going to be a certain standard of quality. But, le but, 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 but fake, although yeah. usually means bad, yeah. doesn't have to mean bad. Okay. It, fake can mean... True. Good quality, right? So why I, I, I hate fake watches. Yeah, and I think you do as well. Yeah, I, I won't touch them. So why is it that this is okay, and a fake isn't? I have my answer. Uh, you know, I don't even have a good. <laughs> I don't have a good answer for that. I That's mean, fine. Yeah, it's just honest. I don't. I mean, what I would say is, uh, for me, this is okay because I like the name Boulevard. Yep. And uh, and and I think that I will say that I'm going to err on the side of. They're paying homage to AP right. Royal Oak, and uh, and this is a great watch for 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 uh, someone who's starting out in their career who who has a sense of the heritage of, of watches, and this is a really neat way to get started without without showing your wrist and saying, hey, look at my fake I watch. For, yeah, exactly right. So I completely agree with you. I. I think the difference between this and a fake watch, same thing with the Gavril Tribeca, which is a Paul Newman 6263 ripoff, mm -hmm. right? The difference is when you're wearing this, to me, the conversation this watch is intended to start mm -hmm. is, holy shit. 
that's a bull of a Royal Oak. Right. That's a really cool yeah. watch. <laughs> As opposed to a fake watch, right. which is, oh wow, you bought an AP? Yes. That's right. And you're like, yeah, yep, that's I right. dropped 25 grand on a watch. Yeah. And now you're a liar. Right, you're a liar, yeah. You know? So those are very different conversations that these items are literally built to start. I've owned real APs, right? I wear this, I think to myself, a watch geek can come up to me and and that's who I care about, mostly watch geeks, not just the general public. I mean, it's more of a watch geeky kind of mm -hmm. uh, interest. And, uh, and they're gonna say, oh my God, I've never actually seen one of those. I've heard about it. Is it true Gerald Genta designed it first before AP? The answer is no, right? Uh, how, how does it compare? It starts an entire right. conversation about homage watches, right? right? Whereas with a fake AP, it's just deceptive. Yeah. And if that's your jam, good for you. Like, right. rock on. Enjoy right. your fake watch. Right. And I mean that earnestly. Mm -hmm. But there is a difference. Yeah. And to ignore... To, to ignore the difference is, is, is to me ignorant and to pretend as if there, you know, there is none is doing yourself like an intellectual disservice. There's clearly a differentiation. Yeah, I, you I, know? I agree, yeah. I mean, I think, you, like, I think you said it well. I'm wearing a bull of a, you know, royal. A bull of a royal? Yeah, right. It's yeah. like cheeky. Yeah, it is, yeah. You know? So bottom line, I think these are two genuinely fun watches, different price points. Uh, I think the Omega is a tremendous value prop. The Royal Oak is more of a novelty piece, still valuable, but more of a novelty. And, uh, and ultimately, this is about kicking back, talking about watches and wine. And uh, I'm glad you brought this to the table. Think about the conversation we just had with, with this watch, specifically with the Bulova, right? So Louis Latour is known for Chardonnay in Burgundy. Burgundy, right? So they're, they're great white, white Burgundy producers, but yet this wine is not made in Burgundy. This is made outside, outside of Burgundy. Okay. So, so, uh, so you, th you think you can say, oh, I'm pouring a Burgundy, but you're pouring Louis Latour, right? Interesting. I think what I'm saying is you're pouring, you know, Bulova stands, stands for itself. And maybe the parallel isn't 100%, right. but, but I think you can stand behind the label in this case is Bulova. Yeah. So you're getting you're getting a this is this is Latour's homage to Chardonnay, but from a different region outside of Burgundy, not Burgundy itself. Very cool. Okay. The, very good parallel. So, it's uh, it's Bulova's more affordable I'm, nine dollar way. Exactly. Yes. Of saying yes. Hey. Right. You people who are wearing this. Right would really enjoy what's on the upper end. Exactly. But let's be real for a second. That's right. Yeah. Salute to that. We killed it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for uh, thank you for sitting down with me, Daddy-O. This is, uh, I, everyone knows this who watches this. Uh, it's, uh, it's a wonderful tradition. It, it's a great series. I love Liquor Run. Yes. But for me, uh, I think that it's something that we will ultimately, you know, look back on and, and say, holy shit, remember when we used to hang out in the backyard and, and, right. and drink wine and talk about watches? Yep. Uh, and I think that that's what drives so much of the viewership to the series uh, is that um, knowing when knowing you're in the good times when you're in them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, right. it's kind of fun this is to be able yeah. to say, okay, yeah, for, for, for work. Yes. We sat in the backyard, drank burgundy, <laughs> talked about cool watches and, and had some fun. So thank you for coming, Dan. You got it. Love you. Love you too.